Hello and welcome to Fatima's Art Show. In today's episode, I'm talking all about paintbrushes. I'm going to start by talking about the different types of paintbrushes out there and what to buy when you're starting out. I will cover the basics on how to hold a paintbrush and the different brush strokes you can create. And I'll cover the three key things that, that you need to take good care of your paintbrushes and that is cleaning, maintaining and storing your brushes. So let's begin. There are lots of different types of paintbrushes out there in terms of different sizes and different shapes and also different materials. First, firstly, I'll cover the different materials you can buy. This is a synthetic brush. Synthetic brushes are usually made out of nylon or polyester. Sometimes they're made out of both. This is a natural brush. Natural brushes are made out of animal hair, sometimes camel hair, hog hair, badger hair. Um, and in fact, the other day I saw one that was um, made out of wolf's hair, which was quite interesting. In fact, you don't even need to um, ha use actual paint brushes. You can just use um, an old toothbrush if you wanted to to paint, or you can use this is this is a dyeing brush. Um, so if you've got one lying around, you could use that or any other type of brush. There are different brush sizes you can buy. When you buy a pack, you'll see that they're numbered. Now that usually means that um, you're looking at sort of the, the biggest to the smallest on the, according to the numbers that you, you see in the pack. Just because um, in your pack you see a number 10 doesn't mean that when you buy another pack of brushes that um, that has a number 10 that will be the same size. It won't be. So it really depends. That's just an indication to show you in, in your pack. It's always good to have a um, small thin brush. Um, these are really good for very intricate details, very small details, finishing touches really to your paintings. So here's another one. If you want to cover a large space, it's good to purchase a um, big brush from, usually you can purchase these from DIY shops and they come in really handy. Now I'm just going to cover the different shapes of brushes out there. This is a round brush. They are, they're shaped round and they usually have a point. They're quite good for um, doing detailed work, especially when they're small, and good for loading large amounts of paint. This is a flat brush. You sometimes can get this with um, long bris bristles or short bristles. Short bristled ones are sometimes called a bright. This is a flat angular brush. Flat angular brushes are usually really good for painting edges, sharp edges. This is a fan brush. Fan brushes are very good when it comes to blending um, paint and also very good in terms of um, making unusual brush marks. So now I've just covered the different types of paint brushes out there. Now if you're a beginner and you're not sure what paint brushes to buy, it's always good to purchase a pack. That way you've got a different variety of brushes in terms of size, in terms of um, the different hairs sometimes and also the different shapes. So now the basics of how to hold a paintbrush. Well, there isn't really a right or wrong answer on how to hold a paintbrush because you have to um, hold the paintbrush on how you feel comfortable because you're doing the work. But there are certain things you can do to get different brush strokes. Um, if you want to um, be a bit more free with your artwork, you can hold the paintbrush from the top and, just, and you won't have as much control in terms of painting. If you want to create detailed work, I think it's better to have a good grip of the paintbrush and therefore you can do much more detailed work. Some brushes have these nice grips where you can grip the paintbrush and you can paint to make it nice and comfortable. So here is a flat brush which I mentioned earlier and I've just dipped it into the paint. By just del delicately using the top of the brush you can create this brush stroke.
you can just be free and just use the brush like that and you create this brush trail. You can create lines by using the side of the brush. If you apply pressure, and you can even spin it all the way around to create a round brush mark. I did show you different brushes, so um, feel free to experiment with the different brushes that I showed you. So I have just used my brush and now I need to clean it. So how do I clean it? Um, okay, it's very simple, so let me show you. First thing to do is um, get a towel and wipe off all the excess paint. So make sure you get all the excess paint out. There you go. Secondly, um, use some warm water. Now, it's better to run it under a tap of warm water, but since I'm in my studio, I'll be using um, this bottle of water. Make sure all the paint comes out of the brush. You can squeeze the brush just to make sure that all the paint has gone out. If you are using oil based paints, um, you can use a paint thinner like White Spirit or Turpentine and that will get all the paint out of your brushes. I've just showed you how to clean this brush but if you want to clean it thoroughly then I'll, I'll show you how. If you are using oil based paint you can wear gloves, if not you, you don't need to. Since I didn't use oil based paint I'm not going to use, I'm just going to use my hand. Um, so you just get some water, just use some clean water actually, That's better. Some water and just put it on the soap. And you can just put it on your hand and just make sure you get it right off. Can you see, even though I just washed this brush, more paint is coming out of it with the soap. You don't need to use expensive soap. You can just use um, cheap branded soap. If you're, if you're sensitive to certain soaps, make sure you use the one the, that you're not sensitive to. So, there you go. There's more paint that's just come out. Let me wash it out. This will really good, take good. This will really take good care of your brushes. Maintaining your brushes. I'm just going to give you a few tips on how to maintain your brushes. First tip is make sure you always clean your brushes, which is what I just showed you. Otherwise, they will stiffen like this. They'll be rock hard. Tip two, never leave your brushes in mucky old water. What will happen is that it will damage the bristles. You can keep your brushes well shaped. After you clean them, you can just use your hands to shape them so that when they dry, they dry in that shape. When painting, um, especially if you're using quick drying paint like acrylic, make sure you've got a bottle of water or um, so, some water handy so that you can dip your brushes in there because while you're painting, your brushes can dry out. Once you have um, cleaned your brushes, make sure you store them well. It's good to store them upright. Never store them downwards. If you do store them downwards, they will end up like this. Especially if um, there is excess paint and the paint evaporates, it will just stick to the brush. So you do not want a brush like this. 
never store your brushes next to a heater because if you store it next to a heater what could happen is the heat could damage the wood in the brush you can store your brushes in a jar but ideally it's good to store them in a brushes case um, brushes cases are really good because you can carry um, your brushes around with you so if you want to go somewhere and do a bit of artwork and just carry it around with you also you can see the different sizes of brushes you've got if you can't find a brushes case dedicated for paint brushes you can just use a makeup brushes case and use that Thank you very much for watching this episode and if you want to learn more about brushes and which brushes go with which paints please watch my paints episode so please subscribe to my channel and thank you very much for watching